<laughs> Yo, you all right? What's wrong with you? Man, I'm going through it over here, man. Because I, I, I've been thinking about what we've been talking about, and I know exactly who the beast is, man. I, I know who the beast is, man. And, and I'm stressed right now, man. I'm stressed. All right, well, based on the clues I gave you last time, who do you think the beast of Daniel 7 is? It's the Pope. The beast got to be the Pope, man. The Pope, that's the beast, the Antichrist, all of that, man. And, and you know my mom and them, you know they Catholics, and you saying that Catholics is evil because they the beast and all this kind of stuff, man. And I don't know what to do now, man. I'm stressed out, man. Whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, you are correct. That is who the beast is. However, according to his prophecy, that beast is referring to a system, not individuals. So just because you belong to that particular church or denomination does not mean that you are a part of fulfillment of that prophecy. There are several Jesus-loving, God-fearing people in all churches. So it's not about the people. It's about the, the leadership that is basically trying to incorporate Christianity with paganism. As you know, I'm 100% Haitian. And despite popular belief, Haiti is 85% Catholic. So both of my parents are both Catholics and they are probably some of the most loving, kind, God-fearing people you'll ever meet. All right, so it's not about the individuals, it's about the, the powers or the rulers of that system. All right, well, just, just so I know what's going on, break it down for me one more time, all right? Tell me how the Pope fulfills all of those things that we have read about in Daniel 7 and Revelation 13. Break it down for me, man. All right, let's look at the clues though. So firstly, it said that this little horn power would rise up among the other 10 horns. So this is referring to this little horn is going to come amongst the 10 divisions of Western Europe. Also notice it's a little horn. So while the other ones are full horns, which represents, you know, big kingdoms or big places, this little horn represents a small kingdom. And wouldn't you know that Vatican City is the smallest country in the whole world? The Vatican is its own country. And uh, for the sake of comparison, Manhattan is about 120 times bigger than Vatican City. But Vatican City is its own country. Hmm. Speaking of the 10 divisions of Western Europe, these right here are the 10 divisions. Yo, how you do that? What? You got the words on the screen and all that? How the heck? Let me try it. Hold up, hold up. God, you, come on. Super fragilistic SPL doses. Yo, that's dope right there. That's, hey, hold on, hold on. Let me try hey, again. Let me try focus. again. Hold on, hold on. Are you gonna focus on what I'm trying to tell you or focus on the words on the screen? Why, why y'all still in my fun? Man? You don't never want me to be happy, man. All right, so these are the 10 divisions of Western Europe, and seven of them are still in existence today. Reason being is because most of Western Europe back then, they supported and they, you know, they rallied behind the Pope. However, there were three Aryan nations that opposed the papacy. And because of such, these three nations were completely uprooted. That was the Ostrogoths, the Haruli, and the Vandals. As a matter of fact, they have no modern day descendants today. They have been completely annihilated. Hold up, hold up. So the 1260, the 1260 years, would I come from again? All right, now this one is an important one. So according to the Bible, this power is going to make war with the saints or persecute the saints for a period of 42 months or a time, times, and the dividing of times, which is also 42 months. Now, according to the Bible prophecy, one prophetic day equals one literal year. So 42 prophetic months equals 1,260 literal years. So... Did this power ever persecute the saints or make war with the saints for 1260 years? It absolutely did. All right, so the papal system came into power back in 534 AD. That's when Justinian issue was called the, Just the Justinian Code. Now, even though it was established in 534 AD, um, Rome had, had came under siege by the Ostrogoths because they weren't no punks. So unlike the other two, the, um, the Haruli and the Vandals who just basically just, you know, were annihilated. The Ostrogoths, they actually fought back and they, and they actually seized Rome back in, um, back in 534 AD. Now in 538 AD, 
that's when the the siege at Rome was broken and the Justinian Code was actually codified or enacted in 538 AD. Now the Ostrogoths, they weren't actually defeated until 553 AD, but the Justinian Code came into effect in 538 AD. I remember reading about that in history class. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Now in the year 1798, Napoleon, he wasn't really feeling what was going on in Rome with the papacy. So he sent his general, General Berthier, into Rome to basically to capture the Pope and put him in exile. And he replaced the, the religious-centered uh, Justinian Code with the straight, secular um, Napoleonic Code. And that happened in February of 1798. So 1798 minus 538 equals what? 1,260. Oh, snap. So the Dark Ages, the Spanish Inquisition, back when like 50 million people were killed for opposing the papacy's authority, that's when they was persecuting the saints. Dang. Also, this power would, um, would blaspheme against God. Remember the two definitions of blasphemy? One, a man claiming to be God, and number two, a man claiming to forgive sins. Do those apply to the papacy at all? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the Pope, he wears what's called a mitre, which is that, that hat on that, that the Pope wears. And on that mitre, it says, Vicarious Philae Dei, which means the vicar of God on earth. So what he's saying is basically he is God's representative on earth. He is the son of God on earth. That is a man claiming to be God. Also, you see it all the time where the Pope does one of these joints, right? And that's to, that's to absolve you of your sin or to forgive you for your sins. That's also why they have confession, where you have to go and confess your sins to a priest in order to be forgiven. Man does not have the prerogative to forgive sins. That is something that God alone can do. Oh, so he's got all these random facts and everything off the top of your head, huh? Okay. Speaking of the Pope's mitre and vicarious feline day, if you add up those letters in Roman numerals, guess what you come up with? Now remember, Revelation 13 has said, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six, or 666. If you add up all of the letters in vicarious feli day, guess what you get? 666. Hold on, though. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why don't nobody else know about this then? I mean, I know, I, I know it's a lot, but this is not something that I just came up with or something that's, that's brand new. As a matter of fact, many founders of mainline Protestant churches, they all held the same view. Martin Luther believed that the, the Pope fulfilled the prophecy of Daniel 7 as being the, the beast and the Antichrist. Of course, Martin Luther is the founder of the Lutheran Church. Um, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, believed the same mm -hmm. thing. And even Roger William, who was considered one of the first Baptists in America, they all believed that the papacy fulfilled the prophecies of Daniel 7 and Revelation 13, and that the Pope or the papal system was the Antichrist slash the beast of Revelation 13. But hold on though. So if the papal system of the Roman Catholic Church, if that is the beast, then what's the mark of the beast? You still haven't told me what the mark of the beast is. It's pretty simple. After you know who the beast is, all you gotta do is just ask the beast, hey, yo, beast, what's your mark? Because this beast is more than willing to tell you exactly what its mark is. Now, there's one other clue in Daniel 7 that I haven't mentioned yet. And that last clue unlocks everything that you need to know about what the actual mark of the beast is. Now, in Daniel 7, verse 25, it says that this beast or this power is going to think to change times and laws. It will think to change times and laws. And that right there is the key of understanding what the mark of the beast is. We know what the beast is. But in order to understand what his mark is, you have to understand that it will think to change times and laws. Oh, so you're going to leave me with a cliffhanger. You ain't going to tell me what it is.
I gotta finish editing this picture of my beautiful wife right quick, but I'm gonna get with you though. All right, all right. I'm gonna go back in your fridge, see what you got in the fridge then while you over here editing and doing whatever you're doing. I'm gonna holler at you though.